So The Little Mermaid has released in theaters. I've actually already been able to watch it two different times. Once at a press screening in Denver with about 20 critics, two of them being my friends. And then I watched it just a couple days ago at a promo screening here in Austin with a packed theater filled with families. And then I was able to bring my two little girls and one of their friends with them. And so at the end of this video, I will actually have all of their reactions. So if you want to hear the reactions from actual little girls, there's a chapter marker down below that you can skip ahead to that. I do apologize that I haven't been able to shoot a regular review up to this point in time and even have to apologize that I'm shooting it with my phone on a walk. But this week has not played out the way that I thought it was going to and some family stuff's kind of going on. So had to change my plans a little bit, but I wanted to still be able to talk about this movie as soon as possible. And let's get started talking about The Little Mermaid. And for me, this is a movie that I thought was enjoyable at times was able to capture the magic of the original animated film, but it's also a film that has quite a few very obvious flaws. And it feels like Disney just kind of keeps repeating these same mistakes with these Disney live action remakes where every time they put one out, people complain of like the same three or four things, and then they put a new one out and make those exact same three or four mistakes. But in terms of all of the Disney live action remakes, I would say that this is probably one of the stronger additions that has a bit more charm, a bit more magic to it than a lot of them. It does help that it's following up Pinocchio and Peter and Wendy that just felt complete misfires and lifeless. Whereas this one, I think it does have a good bit of charm to it. One of the big pieces there is that the actress that they cast for Ariel, I think does a really good job. I know the internet has been lit on fire with people livid that they race swapped Ariel and all sorts of issues about that. And it's not just her. There's a lot of race swapping in this movie. There's people livid about that. That's a Disney thing. That's a producer thing. That's a director thing. If you have an issue with what they did, fair enough. Fair enough. Make your argument. But that doesn't mean the actress did a bad job. And she didn't. She's very good at being able to emote. And Ariel is a fairly simplistic character. She's naive, she's curious, she's energetic, she's enamored with this other world. And this actress is able to capture all of that, whether in the parts where she's able to talk or the parts where she's not able to talk, her eyes emote so well. You can tell what she's thinking. You can see the curiosity. You can see the excitement in her eyes. She has a great smile. So for what you need for Ariel, she's able to pull it off and she's a great singer. Once again, if you're just dead set, like you're angry that they race swapped it, just admit that no actress would be able to win you over. Just admit that. But if I don't know what issue you would have with this particular actress for the performance. The performance, I think it's really good. Uh, along those same lines, that when it gets to the shore, there's just a couple little details added in about the romance. They kind of flesh it out a little bit more and so you can buy into it and kind of get that, feel that spark, the romance that was kind of key to the animated film. And one thing I wasn't expecting going into it is that it feels like a movie where they knew exactly the story they wanted to tell and how they wanted to tell it. What I mean by that is there's so many like great transitions from shot to shot, shot scene to scene, sequence to sequence, where this doesn't feel like a movie that had a bunch of reshoots that was reworked in the editing room, trying to figure out what they wanted to do. This feels like a film that was storyboarded and they went into it knowing this is how this movie will flow. This is how we're going to get from point A to point B. It just felt very intentional. A lot of confidence in the storytelling itself and the journey that they want these characters to go on. I mean, of course, it's coming from source material, so that kind of helps when you already have a winning map right over there. Here it is. Here's the roadmap of how to do this right. And so they're able to pull from that. But at the same time, when there's so many movies that, especially from Disney, that feel so reshot, reworked, tinkered with, this one felt like they knew what they wanted to do right from the get-go. Kind of along the same lines of what I said earlier, uh, I think there's a lot of chemistry between Ariel and Eric where you just feel that spark. And I'd say this movie, 
doesn't really come alive until you get to the shore. It plays much better once they get out of the water, go to the land, and the romance aspect of things begins. All that said, as I said, there's quite a few issues here. Big gigantic problem. All of the underwater stuff looks pretty bad. It, it doesn't work very well. And it's like the lighting is off. It feels artificial. It feels like even the quality of the cameras is dramatically different from what they're using on the shore. In particular, the King Triton, every time it shows him on his throne, it looks so fake. The lighting seems so artificial and it, there's like a crispness to it. Everything that just makes, it just feels phony. Everything about it, you're like that. That's not right. And later in parts of the movies, you kind of see him in a different context uh, out of water. And you're like that. It looks like they use different cameras. Like what, what, what happened here? And sometimes it's just too bright. It's too dark. Like it's always off when things are underwater. And that's half the movie. So that's kind of a big problem when you're constantly reminded this doesn't look very good. Another issue. It's just much too long. So the animated movie is about 90 minutes. This is two hours and 15 minutes. It's 50% longer, but there's, it's, it's the same amount of plot. It's the same story. It's not like they added in seven subplots. Same amount of plot, just 50% longer. So it feels like everything kind of goes on a little bit too long. And there's a bit of this kind of escalation where... If you, okay, we want to add a little bit more of this plot in. Well, if we have a little bit more plot, we need another joke. Oh, if you throw in another joke and it's going this much longer, we need to throw another song in there. Well, by the time it's this much longer, we probably need to flesh this out too. So it feels like they're just like adding a little bit more of everything. And every time you add a little bit more of one thing, you feel like you need to add a little bit more of something else. That kind of escalation problem. Like when you run sound and you're trying to make one instrument stand out, you can either pull everything back or make everything louder. Like it turns into this situation and most people just keep pushing things up so everything gets get louder and louder. In the case of this movie, they just kept adding a little bit more of everything until the runtime makes absolutely no sense for the amount of story that they have because they just keep pushing everything up. More jokes, more songs, more plot beats. And there's a few plot elements that kind of helped. There's a, there's some, like with the romance in particular, it's like, okay, yeah. We got a little bit more detail there, fleshed it out, a little bit more depth to Eric. All right, cool. I'm down with that. Pretty much everything else, though, it's like we're, we didn't need all this extra stuff. It doesn't improve on the classic that we've had for a very long time. And the other issue at the beginning of the movie when we're under the sea is that all of Ariel's friends are sea creatures. A bird, a crab, a fish. And so you get the Lion King problem of photorealistic crabs don't emote photorealistic fish don't emote and so you have these lifeless friend characters so it can't come to life and when they're doing under the sea you can't have like this energetic crab singing and dancing with smiles on his face because crabs don't smile in which case they have to particularly edit the sequence that he's singing to not focus focus on him he's like in the foreground while you're focusing on the background or like it's always you're you're focusing on something besides the person singing the song because he's not very interesting singing because he's a crab there's a lot of stuff like that and so that's why it kind of comes to life once you get to the shore because it's humans interacting all that said I, I still think it has some of the magic it captures it. It, it it's enjoyable it's fun it should be shorter they, they made some weird choices with the way that they designed the underwater stuff, but it is an enjoyable film. And I'll say this, it played great at the promo screening that I was at with a bunch of families. Like Ursula, kind of the chatter after the press screening I was at, where there was like 20 people, uh, Ursula, that didn't work for me. When I saw it with a crowded theater of families, they were laughing at everything she said. They were absolutely eating her up. After a couple of songs, people burst into applause. I mean, people were having a blast with this movie. Now, I took three little girls with me under the age of 10, my four-year-old, and then two nine-year-olds. The four-year-old started to lose interest right around the part where they were transitioning from the water to the land and she started going, can we go home? I was, and she doesn't normally do that. So it was definitely testing her patience, but it quickly won her back and she was fine for the last 45 minutes of the film. But it was 
a bit too much for her in the middle of the movie. Other girls didn't seem to have any issue with the length of the film. They didn't complain about it or anything like that. But here's what the girls actually had to say about the film. Hi, guys. Hey, so we just got out of seeing The Little Mermaid. Chloe, what did you think about it? I like the new live action Little Mermaid. It had a bunch of new details. Hey, Karis, what did you think about the movie? Good. I like the live action Little Mermaid. I like how it added on to it, but like didn't give it a different plot. I like the part when they sing. It was really funny. Sebastian was the funniest. There's a bunch of parts where basically the whole audience just was like, ha ha ha. And then at the end, everyone was clapping. It, it played really well for a packed crowd of families. Which part was scary? When that evil witch take over the world. I love it. I liked it more than the original. Bold statement. So there you have it. We went to go see it. They all had a great time with it. Oh, Karis, what did you want to say? See? <laughs> they turned in my hand during the movie. Yeah, so be sure not to wear one of those during the movie, but our audience ate the film up. And here was the out-of-the-theater reaction from my buddies. So we just got out of seeing The Little Mermaid, and I found it to be quite enjoyable, but also very obviously flawed in other ways. Ariel is great. She just has very emotive eyes, so she's super charming. Also, like, they were very assured in the storytelling. Like, there's all these great transitions from scene to scene. Like, they knew the story they wanted to tell. They didn't always know how to show it, though. The underwater stuff does not look great. I also don't know why it's 50 minutes longer. It's the same amount of plot, but 50% longer. What did you guys think about it? Man, had a great time with Hallie. She was awesome. However, Triton, uh, not the best, not the best. <laughs> yeah, Hallie Bailey, amazing. New stuff, uh, not great. So I think we all thought there's a lot of really enjoyable things in here, but the flaws are also really obvious at the same time. So it's worth seeing, but just know parts don't work. Real quick, before I give you my final thoughts, be sure to join me down below in the comment section. Be respectful. I don't know what it is that this movie has decided to become the target of every angry person on the internet. Show some respect. If you're mad about the race swapping, communicate it in a respectful fashion where you're actually coming from, what your frustration is. Don't just be a jerk. And if you're mad at me because I criticize the film at all, be respectful. Don't try and invent a motive about how I'm sort of Easterism or something like that. I don't know what it is, but this particular movie is attracting such a strange brand of, brand of anger and vitriol over the internet. It's a movie about mermaids. It's a movie designed for these nine-year-old girls that loved it. And for some reason, a bunch of grown-ups are losing their minds over it. That's freaking weird. As for me... I thought it was an enjoyable film, but a flawed film. It captures some of the magic at times and it falls completely flat at other times. But at the, in the end, the experience that I had seeing it by myself and much more so when I watched it with my two daughters and one of their friends was that this was a solid Disney live action remake with some mistakes that Disney could have improved upon. And I don't know why they didn't make it a little bit shorter. Overall, I'm going to give this one a B, a 7 out of 10. And as long as you're not just totally cynical about these Disney live action remakes and the race swapping, you'll probably have a good time with this movie. I've got some more videos coming out over the next few days uh, related to this one. I'm going to do a ranking of the Little Mer Disney Little Mermaid films like with the direct-to-video sequels as well, and then a ranking of the Disney live action remakes. Be on the lookout for all of that. Keep talking movies and TV too much. Bye-bye.